Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it's the last day of September. It's September 30th of 2020. And in a few minutes, it will be October 1st. So I'll be able to check out, see what's uh, a new available on, you know, Netflix and Hulu and things like that. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of an update, um, some additional information about my pacemaker, um, and what else. Well, I'm qu quickly going to mention um, the debate the other day. Uh, I haven't watched really debates in years and years, you know, uh, but I, I flipped over a couple, a few times, for the debate on Tuesday night, uh, I couldn't stand. You know, then I left. Um, and you know, people are talking about uh, what to do about it or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't know. Both sides uh, have to agree. You know, they. Uh, Democrats, whoever, you know, and the Republicans for the candidates, I guess they get people together and through the commission or whatever, and they decide on the rules and uh, everything. And everything is worked out between these two groups, and they agree to everything, and they sign off that they agree to everything. But when you have somebody who's not going to follow, the, you know, the rules, uh, what do you, you know, what do you do? Now, you know, sure, we've had things in the past where somebody, you know, <laughs> speaks when they're not supposed to or, you know, but in the situation like they had on Tuesday night, I don't know what you do. I, you know, you can say, well, okay, don't hold debates. And I think in this situation, with these, you know, with President Trump and with uh, Joe Biden, um, it it wouldn't. I don't. I don't think it would have mattered. I mean, if they didn't debate, I don't think it would have mattered. Um, but in, you know, in the future, you know, you might have a situation where, let's say, you have a president, and you have somebody who is. You know the de well, let's say it's a Republican president, and you have a Republican. I mean, you have a Democrat who's running, and let's say the Democrat, you know, uh, can't raise a lot of money for some reason. Uh, the debate might be very important for the you know Democrat. It could be you know Democrat or Republican, but let's say. For the Democratic candidate, I mean, it, it would be his only chance for everybody in the nation to, you know, see him and hear him, or whatever. If you don't have the debate, uh, then you know he probably wouldn't have a chance at all. Now, of course, this is not that situation. Uh, uh, Biden has been, you know, raising more money than you know President Trump. Uh, for the advertising and what have you, and the, you know, the actually, uh, Biden is you know ahead in the polls. I think just about everywhere, but in some places not by you know a lot. So, in this case, but you know if you had a, another situation, and somebody's running, say somebody you know is running against an incumbent president and uh, the, the person really has good ideas that's running against the president and the uh, person is articulate and just everything and the American people would need to see, you know, uh, to see it if you don't have a debate that, you know, election over, incumbent, you know, probably wins. So I don't know what you, you know, what you do. Uh, one thing for for like this debate would be, 
you know, to turn off the president or turn off, <laughs> turn off the microphone of whoever is flagrantly not following the rules. Turn off their microphone. Now, I think with the way the audio, you know, is set up, probably, you know, if you did uh, turn off the microphone, that probably would stop the other person. Well, it might, might not stop them. They just might keep yelling and screaming. But, you know, the way audio is set up, uh, unless that person left their place and walked over and pushed the, <laughs> the other one out of it, started using their microphone or something, uh, I think cutting the microphone would pretty much take care of that uh, situation. I don't think you'd need to put each person in a sound, you know, like these uh, TV game shows where they have each person in a soundproof booth that can't, or they, well, you'd want to be able to hear each other, but uh, where you could positively cut off their sound and that's it. Uh, But I'm not sure that would, uh, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's the way. And it should be up to the moderator, you know, both sides have to agree on who is the moderator or moderators. Uh, and then I guess you'd have to arrange, you know, if you have more than one moderator, if you have two, you know, what if they disagreed? You know, what if one wants to cut off the sound and the other one doesn't want to cut off, the, you know, it. It could be a zoo. Uh, this would be crazy, and it would never happen, and neither side would agree to it, and both sides have to agree to everything. I don't, you know, everything, they work out all the detail, you know, the details. But after uh, this Trump-Biden debate, now, I, again, this is positively crazy on my part, and it would never, they wouldn't agree, neither side would agree to it. I say, you know, agree on, you know, the where the microphone, all agree on that stuff, and not allow anybody in, except, you know, the, you know, security and, and uh, the, the people's, you know, people there, there to, you know, uh, staff people have an imp totally empty, you know, thing, and then videotape the debate, and then when that's done, you have uh, the moderators. You know, it, it would have to be the moderator because you couldn't say, you couldn't then sell it, then you couldn't allow. What I'm getting, what I'm getting at is, you know, you videotape it, and then when you have somebody who flagrantly violates the rules, and you know, and then you just edit it, uh, that, and you'd have to decide on, you know, just take out their audio, of course, and that's, you know, then it's on tape. You know, this is the tape thing. Take out their audio. Or even just freeze frame them, you know, so they couldn't even be pointing or, you know, giving you the finger, you know, whatever, just, you know, just lock it up. But maybe a, uh, a thing would come up and say, you know, President, you know, Trump or whoever it was, you know, President Trump violated the rules of blah, 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 and... Uh, the moderators, or the probably you'd have to move have somebody beyond the because it's edited. I mean, it's then it goes you know that, or else you'd have hate against those guys. Those guys would have to have uh, the moderators would you know have to have uh, security twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. You know, around them. Or that's you know, but edit it. So you edit out the the uh, the violations, and now you you know you'd allow some violations, uh, but I mean in that case, you know the the thing you you know like the Trump Biden debate, 
you would edit out Donald Trump's, you know, violations of the rules that were agreed to, and then, you know, you make the editing, then you, uh, then you tell the public, okay, the video of the tape that was, uh, you know, of the debate that was done yesterday, you know, will now, you know, be broadcast by, you know, television networks, channels, and whoever. I think the television channels would object, well, you know, would object to it. Uh, it just wouldn't work. But that would be the way to do it. But, it, you know, and the American people, too, they want to see the debate, you know, live. They want to see, you know, is, you know, so-and-so going to start crying? Is uh, so-and-so going to uh, run across the stage and try to choke the opponent? You know, you, they want to see it live. And I think the number of people that would watch, you know, the debate, and if, say you had done that with this uh, Trump-Biden uh that would be the thing too. What you would have to do is uh, say you edit it. Well, you know, of course, Fox News would say if it was, you know, if they didn't like it, they would say, well, we're just not airing it. And Fox News is, I think, like number one among the uh, channels, not number one in quality or anything like that, but, you know, has tremendous numbers of viewers. So, you know, like they wouldn't run it. Then you'd have maybe what if Fox News, you know, they get, they have the tape, they have the, you know, the edited video. What if they decide to edit the video themselves? If there was some way where you could make it where, you know, okay, this, uh, the, the election committee or the uh, debate committee or whatever, <laughs> owns this video you know it's copyright i don't know what you could do and say you know it's available for free to news agencies and youtube sites or whatever but you are not allowed to edit you know the thing if you do we will sue you i, I don't know if that would work it, it's a crazy idea I don't know. Uh, anyway, enough of that. Uh, I've got this coming Friday. And I read the reviews on this. Oh, I, I'm back to one monitor again. And I have, the, I have my desk space now. I can put my food here. I can lay my notebook here with my, you know, some notes or whatever. And I can do all this stuff, and so I've got one monitor, but I don't know what you're seeing. Uh, I can do, I can do this, and I can see what, you know, what you're seeing. And I'm not really happy with the, uh, with the video there, okay. Um, so, now this, you know, these are speakers for me. I have a very inexpensive set of speakers. They're not, I can't crank them up as, well, they go, it goes up, uh, I think these are Creative Lab, or Log, is Logitech or Creative Labs uh, speakers. Uh, now, I read the reviews and everything of uh, this, this, the bar, that will go underneath my monitor here is, uh, you know, it's, it's not very long. Uh, and of course it's gonna be close. And then of course there's a subwoofer or whatever that's gonna go underneath the, uh, you know, underneath the, the desk. Uh, this has gotten good reviews on Amazon, but uh, the reviewers, I think, all agree, okay, it's 
for eighty dollars, it's nice uh, sitting here, and you get the, you know the sound. But the problem is, I, if it's uh, if you did try if you have your the only thing I have is my monitor. I don't have a TV. You know, I do have a Roku TV. I think you've seen a few times, a small one. And I just don't. I just, you know, everything is on here. Um, but now, if I had a Roku, or if I had a uh, television set, big screen TV, or something like that, over, and I were to put uh, this. Uh, Over there, the uh, it wouldn't be as good. It's not, you know, it's not as good from what the the reviewers here are saying. Uh, but if I had a big screen TV or something, or not, it wouldn't have to be a gigantic screen or something. If I was going to have a sound card or whatever, well, I would pay more money than $80. And, uh, but I think this will work fine for me. And keep in mind, I have a really bad hearing loss and I've had it since like, I don't know, the first or second grade and never had it treated or seen or anything else. I've mentioned that. So I think that this will work out and that's also you know, I've got uh, speakers, you know, little, one on each, you know, side. That'll actually free up that space. So I have a little more additional space. So, moving on. Um, I had a uh, new pacemaker put in me. Um uh, when was it? Uh, what, a couple of weeks ago or something like that? Or less? And the information that I gave you then, I need to update it and correct it. I went over yesterday. Uh, Hillary took me over to the heart doctor, but I didn't see the heart doctor. I just went uh, for them to look at my incision and uh, use the monitoring device, you know, that they, uh, that they have, which doesn't look like this, of course, but, and, uh, then in three months, I will go back again, and I will see the heart doctor, and they will do another monitoring, here. and so, but what I found out was, uh, <clears throat> well, another thing that I found out was, I mean, I got, a couple of letters <coughs> from Medtronic saying that I needed a new, you know, device or whatever. And I ignored the letters because this was, you know, I started out with a different uh, device to send to the, you know, the doctor's office my all my heart information every three months. Every three months, I would you know, have to do this, and you can see videos. I'll put uh, I'll put the link to my uh, pacemaker playlist underneath this, uh, where you can see some of the videos that I made in the past, starting with the first one. I, I need to go in and organize them chronologically because I just set that playlist up. But I I started out and I had a different uh, device, not as, not as good. And then I went, uh, a few years back, went to this, the one in the past did this didn't had, you'd used the phone line or whatever to send the data. Now this is, has, uh, I guess a miniature cell phone or something. I don't know. It sends it, you know, wireless or wirelessly. Uh, you know, cellular or what, and so this was a new, a new one. So, I the letters I was getting from Medtronic was, you know, I needed a new one. So finally, I called them and I said, "Well, I have a new one." And then the lady says, uh, "Of course, they have the records right there." And, you know, 
She says, well, do you have the uh, the blue one or the white one? And I said, well, the white one. She says, well, yeah, that's the newer one. She says, but uh, no, you need a uh, new device. And I think she asked if I had, I think, yeah. I think she says, do you have a cell phone? I said, yes. And she said, uh, what, uh, you know, what make or whatever? And I said, uh, Motorola. She says, it doesn't work or thing doesn't work with Motorola, she says, but what we're going to do is uh, send you out a device. Now, she didn't say Wi-Fi. She said, well, we're going to send you out this device, and it needs to be within 10 feet of you, you know, when you're sleeping, and four hours a day it needs to be, you know, uh, you know, I don't sleep four hours at one time, but I, you know, I sleep more than, it, you know, because I just wake up, have to go to the bathroom, then go back, to, you know. So then I went to, I it was scheduled to go for the uh, heart doctor. And I went in and I uh, asked, and what they were doing was just the scan thing. But the technician was, you know, very talkative and everything. And uh, he said, you're going to be getting a new, uh, you know, thing. I said, yeah. I said, they said that it, was, uh, I have to set it by my bed, and I said, apparently it works by uh, Wi-Fi. And he said, no, Bluetooth. I said, Bluetooth? And he says, yeah. He says it works by Bluetooth. And I said, uh, well, so, because I thought just the bat I thought just my battery was replaced. Uh, and he, I said, so, the new battery and it has a chip or something rather that does and he says well no he says uh, they uh, left in the leads that go into your heart and the leads that uh, are going to plug into your new pacemaker and battery and I said so they replaced the, the one unit he said yeah I said, that explains the big bruise that I had here. I said, I was wondering about that. I said, they must have had to, uh, you know, use some pressure. So he says, yeah, sometimes it's hard to get them out. So I actually have a new pacemaker put in. I thought it was just the battery. I have a new pacemaker battery that went into me that does Wi-Fi. And so the device that I'm getting, I guess, it will look something like uh, echo, to, you know, an echo device, uh, and it will set and then it be connected Wi-Fi. Then I did a search just now, and it looks like uh, oh. looks like they've you know upgraded. Uh, gone to new devices. So what it's going to mean is, for me, uh, I guess I, I wouldn't need that little device if I had a cell phone that, uh, and here's a list of them, I think, that are compatible. Looks like all the I, iPhone devices and looks like the uh, iPad Pro, the iPad Air, the iPad Air 2, and many and all those look like they're compatible, you know, compatible. And it looks like all of these cell phones over here are compatible. So I wouldn't need to uh, have that device. I could, it, I could, it could just be my cell phone if I had a different. And I am planning, if we get our $1,200 uh, stimulus check I am planning on getting as I've mentioned before either the iPad you know maybe the iPad Pro or an iPad Air or uh, something like you know something like that I don't think I'm going to get a new cell phone but on the other hand I may at some point get a new cell phone but I do plan with the stimulus check, if I get it, that I'm going to go 
with Apple. First time in my life to, you know, be really using an Apple product. So, uh, so what's going to happen is when I get this device, which is should be able to do in a day, takes four or five days. They're sending it UPS. I have to sign for it though. And our UPS driver, well, we have an excellent UPS driver, a lady here that's worked here, or, or that, you know, for UPS, that's worked uh, for them for years. And she is a great, you know, and she brings packages to the door and she knocks and does all those kind of stuff. And I don't know which one of the other, you know, UPS drivers, they'll say that they came to the, you know, we're all here, three of us, always. And, uh, watching for the, you know, things that are coming, and uh, they'll say that uh, nobody came to the door, and they won't even knock. I don't think they even come get out of their truck. Uh, but, so anyway, I'll be, well, I, I'm always watching for it, and tracking it, if I can track it, you know. And, uh, so, we're going to get that, and once... I have that device, and then maybe eventually if, but once I have the device they're going to send me, uh, you know, um, I will no longer need to go to the heart doctor except once a year. Now, I do have to go on three months because I just had this put in, you know, and they want to. Um, but I'll have that device, and it checks data and I'm not sure exactly what it, you know, does. Uh, I'm not sure if it sends, you know, I, I, I guess it probably sends some data saying, you know, well, I guess, you know, since it's not going to be like every three months, it's going to be however uh, the data will just go from my pacemaker, you know, to the doctor's office and I won't have to do that. Uh, three months thing and you know use the scanner it'll just be getting it by bluetooth i did ask you know uh i said well you know if if it's doing that i said if it detects some type of a problem you know with my heart rhythm or whatever it is does and he says yeah uh you know it notifies and then you're contacted or whatever they need to, you know, need to do. Uh, and the other thing, what was I, then that just left my mind here. Uh, what was it? And I can't remember. But um, it sounds like from this article that I read that if you have a cell phone that is compatible with this, and I'm sure they're adding more. And like I said, I'm going to get an I. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to get because, you know, they're... <sighs> I'm not sure when the next thing for Apple's coming up, whether it's next month or whatever, and they're going to come out with a new iPhone, and they'll upgrade their, you know, uh, iPad Pros and... Uh, this stuff, so, but I'll be able to, you know, access it with my cell phone, and I guess I could probably, I actually have the, I mean, I mentioned that a while back in one of my videos, that it would really be nice if the person who has a pacemaker and could, you know, go online and that, you know, see the data. Well, now, you can, you know, we're, I guess, able to do that. Well, at least I, not right now, but will be able to do that. I'm not sure uh, I mean, I'm not sure I could, I guess, get my heart rate and uh, various things. Oh, yeah, another thing that I ask. I said, okay, well, that's actually, I think, how it, it popped up that, no, you have a new model of the uh, pacemaker with a battery. And they were both, oh, you know, that's, I think that's actually how it came. Because uh, 
uh, I, then I said, uh, well, I said, I got 10 years use out of the last battery, and because I have this uh, condition that developed during these 10 years where, you know, my heart used to, on its own, send a signal over beat, you know, and pump blood from one chamber to the other or whatever. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of doctors and nurses and other people. Oh man, he's getting it all wrong and blah, 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 you know. But anyway, what do I, you know, it's a uh, higher pay grade than I am out of my, you know. But during this last, at some point during the last 10 years, for some reason, my heart has stopped sending the signal. So it's dependent for that totally on the pacemaker. Uh, so anyway, I said, well, you know, I got 10 years use out of the last battery. And I said, that's, that's a long time. I said, you know, 10 years, you know, it went fast, but, and I don't like having a procedure, any kind of procedure done, but not, you know, not a big deal. I said, but if there, if it's, if the battery is having to supply, you know, a Bluetooth, uh, signal or Wi-Fi signal or whatever, you know, Bluetooth in this case. Am I still going to get 10 years use uh, out of the battery or, uh, you know, is it going to be five and a half years or something like that? I said five years, you know, I'd hate to go every, although I'd, I'm not sure I'll be around for, you know. But uh, the guy actually said, well, no, you have the new pacemaker and, you know, the new battery. And uh, it looks like, you know, 12, it, you know, instead of 10 years, you're probably going to get 12 years out of the uh, thing. I don't think I'll, I'm, I'm going to be 80 in March. I don't think I'm going to be around for 12 more years. Uh, and really, I'm so weak, so tired arthritis is so bad and all those kind of stuff, you know. I mean, I I want to go peacefully in my sleep or, you know, I don't want to have a stroke and end up at the hospital with tubes. And, of course, I've already signed paperwork and that kind of stuff. That, no, I don't want any, you know, uh, that type of stuff done. But that doesn't guarantee that you don't end up that way uh, unless the paramedics that come and others, you know, Unless they know, of course, it's on my medical, you know, chart and that type of stuff. But uh, so pretty neat technology. You know, all this is pretty neat technology, man. I my first computer, the Radio Shack Model One, had 4K of memory. I uh, upgraded it to 48k of memory and I thought who could need more than 48k of memory you know the first connecting speed was over phone lines to my bulletin board system at 300 baud uh, uh, and now look at what's going on you know Google Maps and you know trying to find uh, you know using a Google your cell phone to I very rarely use my cell phone, uh, and so I'm really not good, you know, you'd think that I would be somebody, you know, I've been on YouTube since YouTube began, I was doing YouTubing type of stuff before there was a YouTube, uh, but I really am not good at using my cell phone, partially probably because of my hearing loss that I have, but also I just don't... Uh, uh, not good at it because I just don't do it. Now I'm pretty good at sitting, you know, being at with a monitor in front of me, and a keyboard and mouse and that type of stuff of looking up information and you know doing that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, I'll show you. Well, when I get in the new device and when I connect to uh, Bluetooth or and then down the road a piece when I get a Apple iPad or whatever I get uh, I'll show you how what app works with 
uh, with the uh, pacemaker. And anyway, thank you very much for uh, for watching. Let's see where it is. There it is. Stop recording.